On the agenda tonight, we're going to be taking a look at Pentatonix and comparing Oh Holy Night with a more impromptu performance. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So this video could be a bit of a bombshell, I do not know, because the request for this video came with the question, do pentatonics use pitch correction? And I actually replied straight away and said, yes, they use pitch correction. And it then dawned on me that maybe people don't know <laughs> that Pentatonix, the vocal group, harmony group, use pitch correction and a calibrator to 440 hertz. So I'm going to be making this video and we'll look at one of their performances and we'll look at one of their performances that isn't really a performance, but they're just singing on a TV show being interviewed and they're demonstrating how they do what they do. But you'll be able to hear and see with the pitch monitoring software immediately the difference between the pitch corrected vocals and then a more impromptu thing when they are singing and we're hearing their voices as they are live. So we'll jump into Oh Holy Night. We'll have the pitch monitoring software on screen. Something to mention about this is that the pitch monitoring software is just going to be plotting pitches. And when we're just working with one voice, obviously, it's a lot clearer as to where that pitch is hitting. In this particular case, there are lots of voices going on, but we know that nothing can be mistaken for an instrument because it is only voices going on here. And if there is any beatboxing, I've taken that out so that there's no confusion as to what's going on and that the pitch monitoring software can only hear the voices and the pitch, the frequency, just the sound of the voices. So that's what we're looking at. So anything that's plotted here, we know it's one of the person's voices. <laughs> or one a voice of one of the people. Right, let's uh, jump into this. Oh, holy night. And by the way, there's going to be a link in the description below if you want to watch this the whole way through without me interrupting it. But, I mean, straight off the bat, we've got um, being squashed to the line here, squashed to the line here, and here, and here. <laughs> so we're already in pitch correction. And again, somebody's voice is hitting the A2 here, and that's been squashed to the line, squashed to the line, squashed to the line. The stars are brightly shine. And again here, I mean, any time that we're getting a held note, it's going to be stuck to these lines. I mean, I really don't have to play the song the whole way through. And I mean, full disclosure here, this isn't really my kind of thing. And I'm not saying that they don't have great voices. I'm saying that what we're hearing is pitch corrected. So when I say that it's not my kind of thing, I just don't like groups that have been pitch corrected because I'd rather hear a group singing naturally because I think that's a great sound, you know, to hear a choir and to hear people harmonizing with each other and hitting frequencies that are expressive rather than stuck to a particular frequency of 440 hertz as, as this is uh, calibrated to. And that's why the vocals here are getting stuck to these lines is because this is what they're calibrating pitch correction to. This isn't where their voices actually were hitting when they were singing it you know, in, in the studio. And of course, this isn't, isn't a live performance, but they don't claim that it's live. So it's not one of those cases. With vocal groups and harmony groups, we've looked at loads of them from you know, all the way back from the 1920s, 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s then into the noughties and the last decade uh, or the previous decade, there have been this influx of vocal groups. And it's not a coincidence that all of a sudden now vocal groups are sounding different to the other vocal groups that have been around for almost what, a hundred years, over a hundred years. They all had another sound but now this sound sounds more mechanical. It's, it's really exact. So how are they achieving this with their voices? And yeah, it, as I say, it's not a coincidence that 
pitch correction over the last 10 to 15 years has just skyrocketed with its ease of use. And not only that, the technology to make it even easier to apply and be able to squash things to 440 hertz and for it to be less obvious. Obviously, this is an analysis video, so we get into it. We really get into the details so we can see it all on screen. But with this massive increase of its effectiveness, ease of use, we're suddenly getting, and we got, especially within the last 10 years, this increase that is following this pattern of pitch correction of vocal groups who are now all sounding the same way. They're all sounding really exact and almost like talk box, which actually it is uh, being stuck to 440 hertz. So it means that they are now sounding like a keyboard because that's what they're being tuned to. 440 hertz is what a keyboard is tuned to. So that's why vocal groups now, harmony groups now sound different to how they sounded even 30 years ago because they're all now using the technology to all sound the same. And, and yeah, I have said I'm not into that. So if there's a vocal group and it's pitch corrected, I'm not really that interested in listening to it. If I was listening to a group that yeah was natural, that's great. And unfortunately, even, and I have checked them, even live performances, when they're uploaded to YouTube are pitch corrected. So they might have been singing it live at the time of the performance and the audience might have heard a live vocal but i mean when i say live i class live as unedited like from a pitch perspective so that afterwards when they take the vocal and then pitch corrected it now isn't the live vocal anymore because it's been changed from what it was to now hit notes that it didn't hit so it doesn't do anything for me but it might do something for you so <laughs> everybody can make up their own mind as to what they like what they don't like but Pitch correction is a huge part of the sound. That's how the sound is achieved. So I think it is a very important thing to address, you know, straight off the bat. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. And also the other thing about pitch correction, and I can bear this kind of thing a little bit more because of the fact we have got vibrato in there. And these are obviously great singers. They've got vocal technique. It's just that the notes that they're hitting here sound worse because they didn't hit these notes. Their notes would have been emotionally in a different place and actually literally pitched in a different place for that emotion. But we're not getting to hear that because it's been stuck over these lines. And sometimes even when there's vibrato that has been shifted over the top of a line. Whereas sometimes with an angsty vocal, a bit more emotion in there, you get a vibrato. And if you were to put a middle line through it, it wouldn't go through the middle of these lines. It would go actually sharp of the line, but it, it would be sharp of the line because it's got the emotion in there. But anyway, let's get back into it. The world. I mean, that, that backing vocal there, that might not even be human voices. It sounds like like a synth pad or a voice pad that you get on Logic Pro 10. It sounds really close to that. So that might not even be human voices, but if they are human voices, they've been pitch corrected to like zero sense to these lines, so you might as well be playing a keyboard anyway. In sin and never pining to hear yeah, I mean, and this example is really overdone from the pitch correction when you're looking at or listening to those backing vocals. But also, I mean, this lead singer, this guy's voice, you can tell is great. He's got great vet technique, but unfortunately, we're not hearing his expression. So it's like, it's almost like, oh, he would have an amazing voice if it wasn't pitch corrected. So, and that's why I, I do struggle to listen to this kind of thing because it, it really does put a dampener on great singers. In the soul and yeah, by the way, when we're going through this, anytime we're hitting these notes and it's being held, that is 
a pitch that has been picked up by the pitch monitoring software and we know it can't be an instrument. We know this can't be a keyboard because these are only voices that we're listening to. <laughs> Unless it is in fact being played on a keyboard and the voice, the keyboard sound is made to sound like a voice. <laughs> I don't wanna jump down that rabbit hole. We'll just assume this is all natural voices. <laughs> when I say natural, natural and then pitch corrected. <laughs> <laughs> I love it as well. I shouldn't really love it, but I love it when this kind of thing happens where it picks up somebody's voice for a split second and they just happen to be exactly over these lines all the time. And again, when it's applied a little bit too much, you'll get this kind of thing, you know, bang on the line, bang on the line, and not only, let me see, they did it three times in a row. So, I mean, that's just a red flag to my ears. I mean, one note is a bit of a red flag, but hearing it again, you think, yeah, uh, it's just, just way too overdone. And again, even at the end here, you can see that there's a bit of the yellow line exactly below the line as much as it then goes above the line. So it's just been centralized, sadly. Again here, I mean, I don't know how long I need to go through this video because you'll see this the whole way through. Look at this, stuck on the line. And apologies, by the way, stuck on the line, stuck on the line just snap to the line, snap to the line, stuck on the line. Um, this one actually, I don't think that was even a note. It was just a, some, somebody's uh, voice went up. Maybe it's a combination. Oh, there's probably too many voices going on, but actually you might not be able to see this. Let me zoom in. <laughs> Look at these. <laughs> Look at these little guys here uh, that are getting picked up. Apologies, by the way, if you didn't know this, if you didn't know that this is all pitch corrected, that these voices that you're hearing, that you think that this is natural, because um, yeah, it might be a bit of a bombshell if you're assuming that all of these notes here, uh, I mean, it's amazing really that you literally, that there's, there's no point within this whole performance where we are off these lines. I'm just gonna move away from that video because you don't need to see the whole thing, but that is only the first one minute 43, so, it's the same for the whole performance and it's quite a long performance uh, so it's not as if it's just been applied every now and again to one or two notes that might have been slightly off this is just absolutely blanketed across the whole performance that everything has been edited from a pitch perspective so now just in the pursuit of objectivity we are going to be taking a look at this impromptu vocal performance to look at the lines on the pitch monitoring software to see where their voices fall when they're not pitch corrected. And as you guys know in my videos, once I've shown one thing, I'll then show you the other thing so that you can see objectively how the lines on this graph compare. So we'll just watch this. Okay, yeah. uh -huh. so we'll start with Kevin. Um, and then Kevin will usually hold down the beat. They, they. <laughs> and for reference, what I've done is I've taken out the beatboxing so that we can just hear the voices because I don't want any of the beatboxing to interfere with the frequency of the voices. So like that previous video where I took it out on that, we're now getting a true representation of the frequencies, the pitches that are being hit by the voices. <laughs> and then Matt over here, our Mr. Bass man, he holds on the bass line. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and then out of the trio, two of us will sing background parts. I mean, that was light, but if we go back, again, these guys aren't singing to 440 hertz here because that isn't what vocal cords are calibrated to. But you can see um, we're nowhere near these lines, flat, flat, flat. But they'll be singing in relation to each other. So again, I mean, it's good that this isn't pitch corrected because imagine if they started sticking these to the lines. I'm actually surprised that I found this video in the first place. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> and then out of the trio, two of us will sing background parts. 
And then the solo just lays right on top. And I think you might even be able to tell with your ear that the backing harmonies of going na ha you know even ha you know hitting that is a little bit sharp and a little bit flat so it's a little bit out but it's because it's not edited this is these are real voices that we're listening to and also i said this um, lead singer had a great voice and he's really accurate pitch wise but because there's emotion in there he's flat and it's great because when i said about them singing in relation to each other he's ever so flat of the note but i think they are singing in key it's not that they're going to be singing totally out of key i think this is actually relevant to pitch so it is impressive from that standpoint but obviously it's great that we can see that the frequencies now being plotted aren't on these lines I mean, I love this kind of thing again, being sharp of this G3. So the great thing about the personal expression of each person's voice is that it varies sometimes to this degree. When he's going sharp, let's have a listen to that again. And even there, he's got this vibrato and again going back to what i mentioned in that other video about if you were to draw a line through this vibrato it would be between the notes because that's this guy's expression this is his voice and why it sounds so great and unique his voice now sounds unique whereas before it didn't at least to my ears there's no personality in there so i think he's got this natural tendency to Ah, to go above the note, which is great. By the way, that's what Elvis Presley did. <laughs> so we're actually eliminating potentially great voices that are standalone and just in a totally different league because of how unique they are. This is unfortunately not shining through in the pentatonics performances because his voice has been moved to a different place. Do ya? Again, he's going sharp, maybe not to that extent, but we can see on the pitch monitoring software, his vibrato goes a semitone above. Ah, ah, like that. So, yeah, again, like I've already said, I'm a fan of this kind of singing, uh, not the pitch corrected type of singing. So if they sang like this all the time, then, yeah, I would definitely watch it and get into it. And I mean, even there, just to point out that we've got a note down here that is kind of just a little bit flat and then in between the notes here. So they're collectively just ever so slightly kind of off the note. But when I say about being off the note, this isn't them singing incorrectly. It's just them singing. This is just what they sound like. This video, I don't know where I found this video, but I was determined to try and find a video that wasn't pitch corrected because pitch corrected is such a different sound it's night and day to natural voices so i wanted to pick a video to show that yeah that they can sing without it but yes yeah, sadly all the stuff that you've most likely heard uh, is going to be pitch corrected uh, because finding this kind of video it, it, yeah is very difficult just a final point somebody linked me to an interview with the producer uh, who puts together the pentatonic stuff and I don't know why, but the pitch correction just isn't spoken about. It, well, I know why, because maybe they're concerned about the negative connotations of everyone now knowing that everything they're hearing isn't being done with just their voices. It's their voices then corrected, and then we're hearing the result of the correction and not the result of them actually singing. So I understand why it's not been focused on, but I think if they just said, yeah, we use pitch correction and we use this particular plugin. The way that the producer is being interviewed about it on like a 20 minute video, and there's even a segment on mixing vocals. I guarantee you that a huge part of his time is spent pitch correcting all of these vocals because they're five people. It's not like going through and doing one person throughout a whole performance. He's got to pitch correct everybody's vocal. So that's going to take a long time. It's going to be a significant amount of time to get the right sound to it. 
So to not even mention that, when you're talking, he, of course, spoke about reverb, compression, um, you know, high pass filters, all this kind of stuff that he applies to the vocals, but nothing about the huge part of pitch correction. But I think it would be really interesting if the producer actually explained it. And then if he just said, yes, we use it, it's just what we do. And it's artistically our sound. Uh, we tune our voices. If they just said that, I'm sure that people would then say, well, fine. Or, I mean, yeah, the problem is some people would think, oh, I thought that was actually them singing. So you might lose a fan base or it might divide people. So that could be the problem. Going through that process, it is a very long process. And I understand why they um, quickly either dodge that bullet of a question or just find a way to scoot over it and say, and then I clean it up with tuning. Or, or, or I clean up the tuning because I think a lot of people think of tuning as instruments. So when a producer says I clean up the tuning, they're not necessarily thinking that, oh, that means he's gone through all of the voices and pitch corrected them all to 440 hertz. They naturally think of instruments because obviously that's what tuning is normally referred to as. So that is the video for tonight. And it is one of those that I just naturally assumed everyone knew <laughs> that is pitch corrected. And if this is news to you, then again, it's up to you how you react to that, whether you think, oh, well, you know, it doesn't really make any difference to me that it's not their real voices. And if for some people it might make a difference, but you know, that's what I'm here to do. Somebody asks me a question and then I answer it objectively and you can decide exactly what to do with that new piece of information. So thank you guys for requesting this particular song and uh, video. I looked up the second video to have that comparison, but thank you for that request. Keep those coming in the comment section below. As always, let me know what you guys think. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys at the next one. Rock!